So we're going to start looking at cases that look like this. We have our velocity as a function, so I might make this a v of t. I know you're used to functions of x. If you need to translate this to f of x versus x, that's fine, but I want you to get used to this sort of notation. So this is velocity as a function of time. And what that means is you can get the information. If you say at time equals zero, what is the velocity? Well, it's this point. At time equals one, if this is one, what's the velocity? It's this, and you read it back off of your graph. So we're looking at a case where our velocity changes linearly with time. So velocity changes linearly with time. And so this is a very special case, or our acceleration is constant. So we have A is constant, has a constant value. And that's because the slope of this curve anywhere along in here is going to be the same. It's the same at time equals zero. Notice this is not at rest at time equals zero. At time equals one, at time equals two, and so forth. Now, if your acceleration is constant, we can recognize almost immediately, I hope, that I can explain, I can uh, uh, write an equation for my velocity as a function of time. It's just an equation of a line, right? And if we remember back, an equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus b. That should look familiar. In this case, on our y-axis, we have v. So we have v is equal to mx. Well, m is our slope. x is whatever's on our x-axis, so that's time. So I'm going to write it just a little differently so it'll match your book. Your slope is your acceleration, and b is your y-intercept. That's this point right here. And we call that v sub zero or v naught. Okay, and this is our initial velocity. The velocity at time t equals zero. Okay, so this is the initial velocity at time t equals zero. Now, where, when is the initial velocity? Well, it's whenever you set time equals zero. If you're working one of the homework problems, you can decide, hey, I want to start my stopwatch here, or I want to stop the video at this point, and I could call this spot where I start the video at t equals zero, okay? And when we have that, then we have our initial velocity. Notice for those of you who've had a little bit of calculus, if I take the derivative of this, derivative of v with respect to t, let's look, it's always useful when you're doing a derivative, find out what the function is and what's constant. Well, we know this is constant because it says it right up there, acceleration is constant. This is your initial velocity, that's constant. The velocity where you start is fixed, and then as time goes along, notice the velocity is changing. This is the function of time. So if I take a derivative of this, dv dt, then I'm looking at derivative of v naught plus at with respect to time. This first one, dv naught dt, that's the derivative of a constant, so that's zero. Plus, then, since a is a constant, I can pull it out, a dv, dt dt, which is just one. And so, in fact, we get back that dv dt equals a, which is what we expect, right? That's our definition of acceleration. So at least this equation is consistent with that definition. So our equation is that v as a function of time is equal to v0 plus at. And these types of equations are really powerful. I know you're thinking an equation. How is that powerful? Well, if you know this equation, if this is true of your motion, then all you have to say is, well, at what time, how fast is something going to be going? I mean, if hurricanes were governed by this equation, unfortunately they're not, they don't have a constant acceleration, um, they, some, sometimes they have regions where they have fairly constant speeds. But if we could govern our hurricane, we could say, hey, how fast is it going to be going when it gets here? In, 
three hours. We could put the time in and then we could say, oh, it's going to be going pretty fast. So it's not going to stay over us very, very long, which could be good, but it might mean that it has high wind speed. So we tend to be much more interested, not in not just in the speed of the hurricane because we want to know when it arrives but we also want to know the speed of particles that are in the hurricane part of the hurricane but in general this can tell us a lot about what's happening where something's going to be and so we start with this but very often we don't really want to know how fast it's going at the time i mean that's interesting but we want to know where it's going to be like, when is it going to make landfall? What's its position going to be as a function of time? And you may recall from an earlier video that for a situation like this, here's x of t, here I have a velocity that's already going, so my, um, but it is actually a quadratic, so it would look something like this. You know, it's not so, it doesn't have a, a zero slope down here, so it's kind of, back over here might be where it's zero slope, but it's still a curve, a quadratic curve where we have a slope here, the slope of this messy curve right here. This slope would be my value of v zero, and then my slope continues to increase as we go up. And it turns out you can do this, you can take the antiderivative and show this, but we're not going to do that yet because that's pretty far into calculus. For those of you who have just started, you're like a derivative and an antiderivative. Oh my gosh, it's okay. We'll get there. So it turns out that this plot, because it's a quadratic, x as a function of time, we describe by our x zero, this initial x position wherever it is, the initial position of the hurricane, for example, when you're looking at it. Like, is it sitting over Cuba right now? Or is it on uh, over Honduras? Okay, that's our x zero, our initial, when we start to make the measurement, plus then whatever the initial speed is when it's sitting, when it's coming over Honduras, plus one half a t squared. Again, the hurricane is just an example a constant acceleration doesn't really hold for a hurricane. It tends to speed up and then it tends to have a fairly constant speed over the Gulf. And then as it gets close to land, it tends to have an acceleration again because of the thermal changes. Okay, but this equation, we can at least check that it works, okay? At the very least, if we take the derivative of this, notice our constants. This is a constant constant and constant, okay? X zero is where it starts, that's not changing. What we're finding out is our X position at any time, like at time, at one hour, where is it located? At two hours, where is this thing? At three hours, where is it located? That's really what we want to know. Where is it? And especially if we're right here, <laughs> or if in, I mean, in one dimension, you have to be on the path. In two dimensions, it may be that you're, uh, you're not on the path. Okay, so if you prefer, this can be uh, I-275 and you just want to know when am I going to get to the airport? When is that position? How long is it going to take? Am I going to get there in time to go through park and go through security? Okay, so that's our equation. If we take our derivative, just as a sort of reminder of derivatives, I have dx dt. That means I can do a term by term derivative. So the derivative of this, that's a constant, is a zero, plus I can pull this v naught out. So I have v naught derivative of t with respect to t, that's a nice one, plus then the one half and the a are both constants. So I have one half a derivative with respect to t of t squared. And this is where you need to know your power uh, rule for taking derivatives, but it's you bring the two down and reduce that power by one. And so this becomes then, I'm almost out of space, this becomes uh, v zero, this d by dt is one, plus then I get a one half times a two, that comes from this derivative, times a two, a t squared goes down to t to the first power, so this becomes v0 plus a t, which is exactly what we have up here. Okay, so that's 
fairly satisfying. If we take this equation, this is a fairly useful equation, and we take this equation and we solve this one for t, plug it into here and here. So we solve for t, we do our algebra, plug it in for here and here, then we get what is our third equation when we're doing constant acceleration type um, problems. And so our third equation becomes then v squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a, oh, not a room, sorry, <laughs> we get v squared equals v naught squared, our initial squared, plus 2a x minus x initial, okay? And so that is really our third equation. Um, so typically in the book, you'll see this one as our first equation, one, two, and then this one is our third equation. It doesn't matter the order. The point is when we have a constant acceleration, that's the important thing, then we have all of these equations that allow us to then calculate our position, our velocity at any time, depending on what information we have.